Hi, so today we're going to do some basic maintenance on Gilson pipetman pipettes. These, of course, are ubiquitous in everyone's laboratory and they are pretty durable, but they do need to be calibrated periodically and occasionally serviced. Now, there are any number of companies that will do this for you, but if you're on a tight budget and would rather spend the time than the money, you can do most of it yourself. The most straightforward way to test pipetter accuracy is to pipette some water which by definition weighs one gram per milliliter. So for this test, you'll need your pipettes, some distilled water, some tips, a small polystyrene weigh boat, and a milligram balance. I generally weigh two different volumes for each pipette, the maximum volume to check the full range of motion of the piston, and then a smaller volume to check the accuracy of the zero. I'll do each measurement in triplicate. So I've made up a calibration chart with the volume, so for a one milliliter pipette, it's 1,100 microliters. For a P200, 220 microliters. For the P20, 20 and 4 microliters. And for the P2, 1 and 2 microliters. The nice thing about this test is that it's simple enough that you can just assign each person in the lab to check their own pipettes. So here's a P1000. I'll just adjust that to 1 milliliter. and pipette some distilled water. I've had a little bit of blue dye so you can see it better. And we'll just zero the balance and carefully pipette that onto the way boat. Okay, so about 0.996 not too bad. And I'll record that. And I'll do that three times. And I'll just shake that off. And I'll crank this down to 100 microliters. And again, carefully pipette that onto the way boot. So about point one oh two. And again, not too bad. And I'll do that three times. So just to show that this can work with really small volumes as well, let's try with a P2. That's two microliters. Just weigh that out. And perfect. The second test you can do is to set for maximum volume. Place in distilled water so that the tip is almost completely immersed and pipette up and down several times, finally holding it in the down position. If the pipette is working properly, there should be no water or just a tiny drop in the tip. If the pipette is leaky, then due to hydrostatic pressure, less than the full milliliter of water will be ejected, and you'll get slightly more remaining in the tip with each stroke. But you see here that almost none remains in the tip, so that's good. So here are some typical results for a set of pipettes. You can decide for yourself what degree of error you're willing to accept but I would say you want within 2% at the maximum volume, within 4 or 5% at the lower volume. For very small volumes, you can expect to be off by a few tenths of a milligram, so at the low end, weighing 1 or 2 microliters, the error on a percentage basis will be a little larger. If a pipette's readings are consistently too high or consistently too low, especially on the smaller volume, then the zero could be out of calibration. To check that, 
turn the micrometer to just above zero, say 0.01 microliters on this P2. Now you should be able to feel and hear just a trace of free movement before you hit the first stop. But if you turn it just below zero to 999, then there should be absolutely no free movement. If there still is free movement at that setting, then the zero is out of adjustment. This test is especially useful for the P2 where it's hard to check the zero accurately by weight. You can reset the zero with a special wrench that you buy from the part supplier. So you want to insert the wrench into the center of the adjusting knob, then hold the knob stationary while turning the wrench clockwise for less volume and less free movement, or counterclockwise for more volume and more free movement. Now you may encounter one of these older pipettes, you can tell by the six set screws in the adjusting knob. And these will have a split ring in the center of the adjustment knob to adjust the volume. So you first have to loosen all six set screws. For that you use an Allen wrench. This is a 5 64 inch Allen wrench, which happens to be the same as a 2 millimeter Allen wrench. And you want to loosen all six screws by about a single complete turn. Once you have the screws loosened, you want to turn the adjustment ring with respect to the adjustment knob. There's probably a special tool for that, but what I use is this snap ring tool. And you want to have the slot aligned in that direction and just enough room to slip the snap ring tool into the adjusting ring. There's a better view of that. So with that wedged in there like that, the adjustment ring will be held stationary and then you can turn the adjusting knob. You want to turn it clockwise for more volume or counterclockwise for less volume. Once you have it adjusted where you want it, of course you want to come back and retighten each of the six set screws with the Allen wrench. If you don't have a snap ring tool, you can also use a pair of right angle long nose pliers. Here's another pipette from the lab. This is a P200. So we'll pipette 200 microliters. So that's 169 milligrams. Really terrible. Now if we do the pulse test, I bet that up and down a few times. Hold it down. And you can see there's maybe 20 or 30 microliters still in the tip. So that's a really leaky pipette. So let's take the pipette apart and have a look. And you can see that the Teflon seal is loose and wobbly on the piston, so that's not right. And if we get a close-up of the uh, piston here, you can see there's all kind of gunk on the piston. It's in terrible shape, maybe even some rust and pitting on there. We'll first try to just wipe some of that off with some soapy water here. Just wipe that pretty vigorously. and dry it off. And surprisingly it looks like we got most of it off. I've got some ultra-fine abrasive here. This is 7,000 grit to the inch. And I'm just going to polish this off a little bit until it's nice and shiny. Finally, we'll just wipe it with some 95 ethanol. Now 
Now the Teflon seal was probably scored by the dirty piston, so I want to replace that. Just snap this out. Take off the O-ring. And I've got a new seal here. Just put it on the O-ring, snap it back into its holder. Put it back on the spring. Slide that back on the piston. And just put this pipette back together. So we're back in the balance room. Let's see how we did. Again, we'll try 200 microliters. Just carefully pipette that. So about 198, that's pretty good. Here's another P1000. You can see somebody wrote bad on it, so that's not a good sign. We'll pipette one milliliter. About 774, that's almost 25% too low. What tends to happen with these P1000s is somebody pipettes too fast. The liquid shoots up and hits the opening in the shaft, gets sucked up into the mechanism, and ends up on the piston and starts to rust the piston out. You can see there's a lot of corrosion on the end of the piston there. Take off the seal. So rusty, the seal doesn't want to come off. You can see there's rust all up and down the surface of the piston. First, try to wash it off with some soapy water again. And that really didn't help too much. There's still a lot of rust on the surface. I'm going to try a little bit stronger abrasive. This is 2000 grit paper. Just try to scrape the rust off, moving mostly in a direction parallel to the shaft. And it looks like that got most of it off. So I'll come back with the 7,000 grit paper. And just polish that off a little bit. Until it's nice and shiny. Now the rusty piston has certainly scored this F1 seal, so I want to replace that. I have some new seals here. Again, take it off the O ring, put the new seal on.
put it back on the piston and you always want the o-ring facing out and put it back together again let's see how we did pipette one milliliter So that's about 9.95, not too bad. I'll just show one more pipette. This is another P200, and like the other P200, it was delivering volumes about 20% too low. So let's look inside, and it's heavily encrusted with rust. This is maybe the worst pipette I've ever seen. Now I tried some abrasive on this piston, but it's so badly corroded that you can still see and feel the pitting on the surface. Now normally if you can't clean up the piston, you can buy a whole new piston assembly and replace it. This happens to be for a P20. These are about $50. Unfortunately, this is a really old pipette, man. This is probably from the 1970s. And it doesn't have a separate piston. The shaft is one piece from top to bottom. So this is a pipette we'll probably have to retire. But the point is, if you ever suspect you get water up in the body of a pipette, you need to take it apart. Rinse all the parts, including the inside of the shaft, with distilled water and ethanol, and dry thoroughly before putting it back together. For heaven's sake, if you have a problem with the pipette, get it fixed. Don't just stick it in a drawer and let it corrode until it's beyond repair. So I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching.